I still have nightmares. Nightmares over what he says happened to him at Eastern Michigan University. Do you worry about other students? Very much. I very much am worried about other students there. Former Eastern Michigan University student is sharing his story tonight about what he says happened to him inside an EMU dorm and how he was treated by the university. Jacob Goldberg is one of 23 others in a lawsuit who say they were sexually attacked and EMU disregarded or discouraged them from reporting their attacks. We want to warn you, parts of this interview may be difficult for some to hear. Eastern Michigan University. Jacob Goldberg says he always knew he was going to attend school here. It was a family affair. Um, both of my parents went to Eastern. He was excited to move into Wise Hall and begin this next chapter. I felt like I had a new lease on life in school. In his sophomore year, things changed dramatically. A fellow student and friend started to make advances towards Jacob. And I told her I didn't want anything to do with her like that. I wanted to be friends. He thought I the did. issue was solved. Now, a little background into Jacob. He has suffered with anxiety disorder for years, so he took Ambien to help him sleep. He says his dorm friends were aware of his routine. I like having people over. It makes me comfortable. It makes me feel safe. I'm like, hey, I'm going to take my meds. Uh, just let yourself out in 20 minutes or so. And that seemed to work fine. Every time it did. That is until December of 2019. Goldberg said he took his Ambien pills and then... I was raped. I, um, she took advantage of me while I was on my medication. He says the same person he had told a while back he was not interested in attacked him. According to court documents, he was unable to stop due to the dizzying effects of his medication, and there were several attempts made on him. Court records state the morning after the assault, the accused admitted to taking advantage of John Doe 24 while he was under the effects of his medication and told him that she felt no remorse. Court documents state Goldberg felt stalked by the person who attacked him. Both individuals lived here at Wise Hall. Goldberg says the woman would wait for him in the common areas and confront him. I did my best for the rest of that year to, to push it aside, but she would not leave. The following fall, Goldberg decided to report his assault to a residential advisor. That would lead him going to the EMU Police Department and the school's Title IX Department. So you walked out feeling like something was going to happen. Weeks would pass. Goldberg says the Title IX Department persuaded him not to file a formal complaint where charges could potentially be pressed. Instead, file an informal complaint. Do you remember what their words were? Why did they say, let's do this informally? They said that it would prove fruitless. No, nothing would come from it. It would only more suffering for me. A decision he regrets. At the time, he felt alone. That is, until a few weeks later, EMU, it's on you! When he looked out his window, a protest was going on on campus. One of the demonstrators with the megaphone said, how many of you have been assaulted on campus? And it was disgusting how many hands I saw raised. And I, I, it, it was, it was um, the reality of the situation set in at that moment. That my, I am not unique. And this keeps happening. And it's still happening. It was then Goldberg decided to join 23 others in a lawsuit against EMU. It's not only you're taking on your fight, you're really taking on, you're taking on a university. That's the only reason I'm doing it, because I know that I'm going to be helping other people as well. Do you worry about other students there? Very much. I did reach out to EMU. They confirm they are in mediation talks for a settlement on Goldberg and the 23 others who have filed against the university. So they could not go on camera, but did say in a statement, the university ve vehemently denies this allegation. It runs counter to everything that the Title IX office stands for. The statement went on to say that allegations about persuasion are simply not true, and went on to state John Doe 24 considered his options and made a reasoned decision that a formal Title IX process was not right for him at that time.